Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Flesh Wound Force, where we discuss and review your and our favorite comedy films. This is the world's first and only combination trivia host and professional wrestling announcer of Chilean descent that currently resides in Southern California, Ozzy V. And with me as always on this program, first in the Northern Bay Area, Greg. How you doing tonight, Greg? The dude abides, man. How's it going? <laughs> Divides indeed. If I had those style of sunglasses, that would be on my head right now. But right now, flesh wound producer Todd, chilling, I presume. I am chilling, very dude ish. You know, Ozzy's going to be a little more Walter, but that's how it goes. <sighs> it's a, it's unfortunate, <laughs> you know, like uh, I don't want to be, but I'm more the Walter than I am the dude at times, unfortunately. Well, at least we know Greg's not the Donnie. That'd be Dan sitting somewhere alone in his house. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Precisely. <laughs> now, this week, we did review The Big Lebowski, the Coen Brothers classic featuring Jeff Bridges, John Goodman, Steve Buscemi, Julie, and more, among others. But before we get into that main event, we have a preliminary discussion here about a commercial from 1977 brought to us by Greg. Thank you, Greg. Todd, if you would please do the honors. Why are women so happy about new tickle antiperspirant? Is it because Tickle is the first roll-on with a big, wide ball? <laughs> is it because Tickle comes in four fresh fragrances? <laughs> or is it because Tickle helps keep you dry all day? <laughs> Make yourself happy. Staying drier is nicer with a little Tickle. <laughs> Now, if you're listening to the audio version of this program, just allow me to describe you. You heard a voiceover and you heard several women just giggling after the after the question. And all the video had was just closing in on these these women as one was working out, putting on clothes, whatever. They just have this random laugh. And I, I don't I would have loved actually to have been a fly on the wall for the time that the name Tickle was suggested for an antiperspirant deodorant. What are you, Greg, what are your thoughts on this? You, you brought this to my attention. It blew me away. Yeah. So, uh, this was found because on YouTube, they just have commercials from different decades and it was just fun to go through the seventies. And when that came on, I was like, all right, we're in the era of that stupid Daisy commercial that we watched the other day that felt very <laughs> cult like. And I was like, this borderlines on like a very culty vibe and a very like sexual vibe. So I was like, this is just weird. And it's as 70s as you can get for it's I don't even know if you call it innuendo because it is pretty blatant what they're getting at with that. But she literally starts laughing her ass off when he says balls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I was too, but <laughs> 100%. And I did mention, if you are listening to the audio version, there is a video version, of course, available on Blog Talk Radio slash Flesh Wound Features or no, the YouTube channel. No, that is for audio. <laughs> but the YouTube channel, Flesh Wound Features, does have this program. So you can see the commercial firsthand. Anything else you want to discuss about this commercial before we move on to the main course? It was no. just a different time back then. It was a different time back then. Absolutely, it was. Where we could all just laugh at balls. Precisely. Not the case anymore. But right now, technically, we did laugh at some balls, at some bowling balls. And that would prevalently featured in this film, The Big Lebowski, written by Joel and Ethan Cohen and directed as well, released on March 6th, 1998. Rated R with a runtime of approximately an hour and 58 minutes. Now I'm going to read the synopsis. Off the back of this Big Lebowski 10th Anniversary Edition DVD that reads, Jeff, the dude Lebowski, doesn't want any drama in his life. He can't even be bothered with a job. But in a case of mistaken identity, a couple of thugs break into his place and steal his rug. You gotta understand, that rug really tied the room together. Now, the dude must embark on a quest with his crazy friends to make things right and get that rug back. Now, this is one of my favorite uh, descriptions for any comedy because it describes such a small sliver of what mm -hmm. is actually going on that actually it, it blows it up. And it's that perfect, oh, this happened because, because that happened and this happened and this happened and, and just 
one thing piles over another. It's it's such a series of events that you're watching unfold. A lot of fun to go through. Any initial thoughts before we dive in? Man, uh, I've always loved this movie, and it's just one of those movies that I every time I watch it, it's still just as funny. Uh, so it was a, a pleasure to revisit this movie. It's it's just through and through fantastic. Absolutely, Todd. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I've always been a fan of this one. Love Coen, Coen Brothers in general. Um, but this one, yeah, ever since this one, I don't think there's any that, that touch it. <laughs> you see Greg drink at a white Russian. I would be I joining you. I got to work in the morning, though, unfortunately. Now, wait, but, but did you use did you use creamer or did you use half and half? Unfortunately, milk? yeah, I used milk. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it was I get what it. I had, so. get it yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the drink is vodka, coffee, liqueur, and could be half and half, can be milk, can be creamer. All the right. things listed in the IBA. Uh, now, you do see multiple times throughout the movie as he makes this drink. He has half and half in his home. However, uh, I believe when he's over at uh, the porn producer's place, uh, the he name escapes me, he has the powdered creamer that he's got to use there. That's so That's rough. <laughs> interesting thing about the main character of Jeffrey Lebowski is the Coen brothers had said I in one of the documentaries here that that character was actually based off of somebody that they knew out in California and someone who was unemployed but still had their own place and had just had their rug actually stolen and kept mentioning about how it really tied the room together so that's actually fact that's written into this story and of course if if you're not familiar, Jeff Bridges stars as Jeff Lebowski, and we have John Goodman as Walter Subject, which are the complete polar opposites of one another, whereas uh, the dude, as he likes to be referred to, is just always laid back, always chill, lets everything just just goes with the flow, whereas Walter <laughs> self-described, am I the only one that gives a shit about the rules? <laughs> uh, one of his line, but that that line perfectly like encapsulates like what like he is. He's an ex-Vietnam vet that won't have any trouble reminding you of that <laughs> fact and that his sacrifices help uh, achieve the freedoms that you have today, referencing the diner scene where he does after he said that he's going to have to quiet down or leave. No, I'm, I'm going to finish my coffee. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> when it comes to a favorite line, because it's it's tough with this movie because I have a favorite wait, line. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, on. rewind. You are also not mentioning one of the other major characters of that trio. That's true. It is a trio. That, that third person played by Steve Buscemi is Donnie. Now, Donnie is constantly told to shut the fuck up <laughs> by Walter. And so on that, this movie, fun fact, says the word fuck more times than Scarface. Wow. And that yeah. would be an extra hour. <laughs> and what's really interesting is Bridges had mentioned that he had tried to stick all the amount of fucks to stay limited within the script so he didn't add any and he he's even says like what they had on script was great and i didn't really deviate from that so the amount of i didn't add any amount of fucks those were all in the script uh if there's one i mean there's so many ways that going back to the walter donnie relationship there's so many ways that walter tells donnie to shut the fuck up but probably the one that made me like lose all the air in my lungs where he says Donnie, time does not stop, start and stop at your convenience. <laughs> you shut the fuck up. <laughs> it, was such, it was a build up to it. It like all the air. It's like somebody hit me in the gut and I'll just all the air came out and uh, I had a hard time uh, getting back. But that was not probably my, that was not like my favorite line. Uh, it was my favorite way. He told him how to shut the fuck up. But the, my favorite line is <laughs> guys over the line when he bowls. And there's an argument about <laughs> whether it should be marked zero or marked eight. And he reaches into his bag and pulls out a gun and says, you're entering a world of pain. <laughs> and what was so like, it's such a great shot because it's, it's a, 
bowling alley and the the visual of him with the crew cut and the glasses and the cargo shorts is just like man but uh and without spoiling anything i will say my favorite scene is uh, features a folgers coffee can yes 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 the, that the whole <laughs> that whole scene featuring that that coffee can is amazing so greg yeah so so that was i was so glad you at least mentioned that because i had a toss-up of like what was funniest to me and it was either that coffee can scene or one of the opening scenes which just has a trifecta of one-liners from the dude which was do you think i married the toilet seats up (laughs) and then (laughs) and then he grabs the bowling ball he's like what's this and he says Oh, I see you're not a golfer. <laughs> <laughs> Followed right after by, like, they say some comment. I forget what it was about the dude. He goes, well, at least I'm how Or he says, I see you're not how- housebroken as he's peeing on the carpet. And it's just the one, two, three punch of those lines were just fantastic. I was in tears for that moment. Yeah, well, those were great. Todd, how about you? All right, I have a couple specific lines, but if we're going to go like li- like scene, I fucking love the drop. The drop. And oh. oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> when, they, when they're going to the drop. Yeah, yeah. They're fucking amateurs, the whole thing, you know, it's fucking, I, I die every time. But if I'm just doing specific lines, I'm going to go find a cash machine. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh every time. Uh, yeah. And, um, uh, that's the alcoholic in me. Oh, th- watch out! There's a beverage here. <laughs> Get switched to the other limb. I fucking makes me die every time. Right, absolutely. And if, if you're one of the people out there that have not seen this movie, Lord, put everything down and make this a priority. You can actually see it with a subscription to Max Go. You can see that there. Of course, pick up a DVD or Blu-ray. The DVD that I have, I wouldn't really and 4k that's what i just watched by that's now. what i would probably recommend there's no use buying a dvd unless <laughs> it's like a dollar at this point but i was actually disappointed with this whereas the one disc animal house dvd i had was it one di- yeah Maybe. it was okay that, it was a one disc but it had more content in terms about the film rather than the ones i got here so it seems like that they filmed probably 45 minutes of making of footage stuff that can be used in a documentary and they they used 15 minutes in their own ways so it's like there's the dude's life the dude abides uh uh, and then an introduction and the making of the big lebowski and i rather the introductions about uh something else that i didn't really quite understand but the make it says the making of separate in addition to all these other titles for basically all the same thing that all kind of really had the same information but in terms of one that i found very interesting was john totoro uh when he was cast we his, haven't met, mentioned it all yet he has a very small role but <laughs> it's memorable <laughs> it, it is memorable but that it, that is Got thanks to him, movie. like like well in so his character didn't have like he Totoro added him licking the ball and making the whole thing sexual. He added the hairnet. He added the jumpsuit. He added so many things to make that character pop. And I, th- I think it did most definitely, but it, initially with the script, that wasn't the case. Uh, there's another scene where shifting where Walter and the dude are over at an individual's house trying to find money and they see a brand new car parked outside and walter (laughs) says you want to play games this is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass and stuff happens but the point reason i brought that up is because one of the tv versions yes (laughs) i mean todd maybe it's something different but the one i've seen is this is what happens when you find a stranger in the alps that's that's been the dub on the tv (laughs) versions i've seen so multiple times because he does say it multiple times in the movie this is what happens when you find a stranger in the alps and you got that bad dubbing going on as well todd did you hear another version of that on uh, there's, TV? no there's like to- there's a bunch of different ones that's um, probably the only one i remember but that i've seen but or are you looking up 
put other others I that have been used. I'm doing it quickly, so thank you for letting me, you know, telling me what I'm doing. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's totally fine. In the meantime, I could also mention that this movie does also feature Julianne Moore uh, in, in a role that you kind of got to see for yourself and also made it her own. There's one particular scene where the dude's in the middle where she's there and her friend is there and they start laughing about some. He doesn't know what's going on, but it. Man, there's just something that felt so natural about that scene where you've been that person in a situation where something's going on and there's something funny, but you don't know what, what it is. And you're, it's not about you or whatever, but it you're just like, what what the fuck is going on? Yeah, we've all been in that situation. So, Todd, did I give you enough time to find other dubs? No, actually, the only one it mentions is, do you see what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps? Ah! <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's the most popular one, probably. Because it's one that most that's most out there. Well, it says okay here real quick. When Comedy Central is removing the two hundred plus fucks from the movie, was attempting to edit the scene where Walter is smashing the car. They didn't know how to cut Walter saying, "Do you see what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass?" Without having to do severe, overly obvious edits, which would look fake. To solve the problem, they decided to redub it, and the phrase they chose. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps? That's Excellent. Right. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Uh, made me never want to visit the Alps alone. <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> and John Goodman says this is the his favorite mm. film that he's appeared in. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. You mm. can tell he definitely had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when... Uh, uh, when Jeff Bridges was on Inside the Actors Studios, he, after reading the script, he asked the Coen brothers, did you guys hang out with me when I was in high school? So. <laughs> um, so one real quick uh, note that just came to mind off the one of the making of is the guy that they knew that the dude was based off of, they actually had him come out or they... They went to visit because this was all filmed in Los Angeles anyway. In fact, this particular DVD version features an interactive map where you can actually see it tells you where they actually filmed yeah. the actual places. And they mentioned how they had this guy, the inspiration, come out and talk to Jeff Bridges, you know, just get a better idea. And then he he uh, the directors recall that Bridges turned to them after he left. And he says, did he light one before he came over? And they said, probably. And he's like, okay. And right before they, they shot, he rubbed his eyes so they would appear red on camera. Nice. nice. So that, that's like some really, it was, uh, it was fun to see. And everybody that talks about it, they talk about how much fun they had on set because they had, well, like, yeah, they were sticking to the script, but they were able to, in rehearsal, they were able to let themselves contribute to, to the character. And that definitely showed throughout the movie. It was, it was a, yeah. it was a great movie. It was like, yeah, there's stupid comedies out there, but this was, I felt like a good, like you could take the comedy out of it and it's still a good movie. Like yeah, it's still it's, intriguing. It's, it's, you know, part of crime picture, part comedy. There, there's quite a few genres you could go in there, but, and that's always what Coen brothers are. So that's a fair point. But I, I felt like, I mean, Fargo, you could say it's, a de it's definitely darker and more of a hybrid here, but this definitely, I think leans more comedy you know, think crime, it definitely takes those advantages when it can. I keep the Blu-ray with my comedy or with the 4K with comedy. So it's in, I can't in even. Comedy section? Yes, it is. So if you had okay. your own blockbuster, you'd put it in the comedy section. Yeah. There you go. Um, real quick, you want a couple tidbits, trivia? Absolutely. With the exception of the dude helping Maude bowl in a fantasy, he's never seen bowling. <laughs> did you, did you know really? That? I did not know that. Yeah. And then um, I remember how the dude tells uh mod that he was a roadie for metallica and then yes. they're a bunch of assholes right. metallica their reaction was they were super excited to be mentioned in the cohen brothers movie and they were trying to figure out how to incorporate that scene into one of their live shows so, <laughs> oh that's awesome could have went the other so, way with him <laughs> another another fun fact that came from this movie did you guys hear that there is actually a religion of the dude yes yes so it is the dudism 
uh, yeah, Dudaism of with the Church of Latter Day Dude, which there are <laughs> over four hundred and fifty thousand members of this church, and I guess it's very Taoist in uh, uh, philosophies. But I mean, the movie spawned a religion. Like that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, absolutely, and he even mentions in one of the making of features here that he has a, a friend who apparently personally knows monks and they they say that monks or his friend was telling me that the monks actually feel he is the most at at peace it within zen more like he they almost see to him as almost an inspiration <laughs> to just go with the flow right this is the way things are supposed to be and mm -hmm. he, and i just i didn't think that at all that's incredible um so de definitely fun. You got to check it out if you haven't. And even if you have, it's been a while. We didn't, we didn't uh, also mention Sam Elliott's mustache is in this also. Sam Elliott's mustache as well, which uh, the Coen brothers also said it's a bonus to having Sam Elliott's stash. There is you could also slide in his audio wherever you need because you don't necessarily see his lips moving. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a neat trick they mentioned. So going into our ratings. I can't I can't rate this anything less than a five just because like it's it's such a good movie that like you 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 get okay you've heard this the phrase you get your money's worth the time that you put in because two hours is usually longer than a traditional comedy, but you come out like man, I I have no regrets with those two hours. 158 minutes well spent. So I gotta give it a five. I can't give it anything less. What about you guys? Man. Uh, as much as I've enjoyed this movie uh, over the years, watching it this last time, it was fun to revisit. But uh -oh. I have to give it a five. Like this movie's still <laughs> fantastic. I'm, I was ready with the shut the fuck up. Game. <laughs> uh, it was gonna happen too. Yeah. No man. Like everything about this movie. Like it, I know we've branched off from like a movie as a whole and like as a comedy, but as a comedy movie as a whole. This is just five out of five. Fantastic. Yeah. Without hesitation, I'm not going to try to swerve. It's 100%. <laughs> if I could give it higher, I would. <laughs> but it's also difficult to come up with lines to swerve. You know, like, like, how could you, how long could you go without not talking so positively about this movie? It's very difficult. But it um, is my second favorite Jeff Bridges movie. Second favorite Jeff Bridges movie. Yeah. After. Tron. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> yeah, well, I said that said that's, that's your line. So yeah, I know. So it's rare when I, I mean, it's no Superman three, but oh god. Anyway, so <laughs> All credibility. you had you had five across the board for myself, Greg and Todd. Check this out, especially and even if you have, check it out again because it's definitely worth a rewatch. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be back next week with a new episode of Flash Moon Farce where we will be reviewing and discussing the film This Is Spinal Tap. A Christopher Guest masterpiece can't get wait to get into that and uh, much more. That'll be next week on the new episode of Flesh Wound Farce. Again, there is the YouTube channel. If you're listening to the audio, check that out. And if you're on the YouTube and you would like to hear this in your car, you can check out the podcast version as well. Greg Todd, anything else you'd like to add before we head out this week? And he is done with his white Russian. Congratulations. Just be cool, guys. <laughs> the dude abides. I took the words out of your mouth, it seems. It, sounds, it looks like you were about to say that, and as soon as I said that, you're like, well, I got no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. This is Ozzy, that's Greg, and that's Todd. We'll be back next week with a new episode of Flesh Wound Farce. Shut up, Ozzy. <laughs>